Year old Ranshaw Hip Hop since 1987. Tommy season. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. What's good? It's your boy Rick Dange. Here with a front to the site, somebody I've known for a while, my man Ranch, y'all. What's good with you, bro? Sup? I'm chilling, man. I'm chilling, man. Now, you're definitely the definition of a hardworking artist. Yeah, appreciate um, it. Thank you very much. But for the people that may be living underneath a rock or they're not from Philly and they don't know what you got going on, let them know your name, where you're from, and how you got your name. My name, Ranch, y'all. Ran Shaw. So when you see me in the street and you talk about me or whatever, don't pronounce it Ryan Shaw. <laughs> Ran Shaw, and I hate that shit. Ran Shaw. I'm from uh, Philly, <clears throat> of course, Uptown, West Oak Lane, to be exact. Ogon, 72nd. Yeah, uh, from, the, from all folks that want to know where Ran Shaw came from, that's really my name, Randy Shaw. Okay. Yeah, just took me and just remixed the shit out of that joint just put Ran Shaw. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when did you start rapping and what got you into rap? I've been, like, you know, been in and out of studios when I was, like, 16. Okay. But, like, I've been, like, practicing, like, 11. I wanted, I knew I wanted to rap since, like, seven years old. Okay. So, it ain't, like, I was just on the block. Somebody said, let's go to the studio, try this joint. It was like, no, bye, bye, bye. By the time I was, like, in second grade, it was set in stone. Like, you, I want to do this. Okay. But... I didn't, you know, really start coming out with it, you know, so I let people know, or like my close friends, so I got like, you know, like 11, 12, and I was like battling at like lunch tables and shit like that in middle school, go at it with niggas, and then uh, high school, I started going to studios, and once I started going to studios, I started like, to develop my sound more and, you know, really learn how to make a song, learn what to say, how to flow, what's in what's not in no more what's finding yourself pretty much yeah finding myself basically i really took a lot of time doing that and i'm really like a, a, a hip-hop fan like you i like i love that shit like with a passion like I'm, I'm one of them young boys that got all this old ass shit in their phone <laughs> like rather if it's like 94 5 so it don't matter like i really like love the essence of hip-hop so that's how i like to take a little bit of that shit and put it with the new shit and that like create my sound Okay. Now you mentioned hip hop. Yeah. How do you feel about the state of hip hop right now? <laughs> Being a younger guy, you know what I mean, but but having a hip hop background and understanding the game, how do you feel about it? Are we talking hip hop, rap music, or trap or mumble? It's like four different genres right now. <laughs> if you want to talk about music, hip hop is. You ain't even really hear a hip hop artist that came out in a long time. Right. If you really want to be technical, because you know you you got the rap. The rappers, and then you know when the trap rap came, trap rap, they, you know it came and they got this element, that's when the Jeezy's and the and the tips came. And then you know it's the mumble rap now, that's the colorful hair and shit, and then yeah. the, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. all the other shit. So it's like, damn, like it's kind of like, it's, it's too much. Damn, man, it's overpopulated. Every hour, somebody else is coming out or coming up. Like, rather if a new tape dropping, or somebody just got put on the platform, or rather somebody else just drop it's like it just be all over the place like you really might have to really be in one of those top four to really to be on the type of music like a motherfucker that might listen to yadi or you know uzi whatever might not really fuck with a davies or a don q or sure. such and such you see what i'm saying that's how all over the place this shit is now like okay now let's hone in the philly how you feel about the state of music scene in Philadelphia? Uh, Philly, it is what it is. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Philly, cool. I mean, I kind of, I like, I like what's going on. I, 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 I fuck with a lot of people. I like a lot of people's music. You see what I'm saying? And I just, you know, I show love and respect to everybody. You know what I'm saying, okay. do you, man? You do me. <laughs> I permit my success to you. We can work something out. We definitely work something out. I'm down to work with any everybody. Okay. Especially if you're doing something and you hot, like. Why not? There ain't nothing wrong to handle business. That's what this what this is. This is a business. So let's be let's get real businessmen to handle that shit. Facts. Now you definitely have an energetic flow, and you rap about a variety of topics from the streets to the clubs to the ladies. Yeah. Um, how would you describe your music? Versatile. I'm ver I'm, I'm versatile because it's like you never know what's gonna come with me. Like I could 
like you said, I could really make some street shit that have you like, whoa, like, and I could really touch the females, you know, say things that are, like have girls like this shit, and you on the spiritual level, something like that. <laughs> and then I could do, you know, joints for the clubs. But that's really for me, you know, being a hip hop fan and like really like listening to music and really like studying and taking, you know, little things like I'm allowed to touch different audience audiences. Like you might not know who I am, but somebody you know know who I am. Like or like you might it'll matter if you if you got one song in my phone, probably two that you like really fuck with, like heavy, like mm -hmm. fuck with rips, because you know I touch all topics. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people stay in one topic and she get boring after a while. You yeah, do one show you on that. Now, what artists are you listening to right now? Who inspired you to get to this point? Uh, we talking about like my favorite ever or who I'm fucking with like right now? Both. I got like a top eleven, bro. <laughs> Give me your top three that you listen to right now. My top three I'm listening to right that, now. That you listen to growing up that inspired you to rap. All right. Um. Right now, Dave East just dropped. I'm I'm really tuning into this tape. This tape. I like his tape. This tape. Shout out Dave East. I'm a uh, I'm a baby fan. I like Lil Baby too. Definitely shout out to Lil Baby. I like Lil Baby. This shit hot. I like um, who else? Meek John's hot. Future John hot. Drake John legendary. I fuck with that John. Okay. And that's how I hearing that from me. I I really I was an anti Drake boy for a minute, but <laughs> Drake John. You came hot. around now. <laughs> yeah, hey, like Drake John hot. My top three was over was Jay Nas and uh, Big in that order. Okay. Okay. Now, you just dropped a new project called Tommy Season. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank you, thank you. Um, you're also having a concert on August the 8th at Voltage Lounge. Yeah. Okay, let's start with the project first, though. All right. Um, why'd you name the project Tommy Season? Tommy Season is me. You, 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 as you see it, I got the do-rag on right now. <laughs> okay. But if you know me, my name is Tommy Pickles with the body. Broke holes can't call me. And I call myself Tommy Pickles because... Not only do he got the uh, ball head shit, but like Tommy, that nigga, if you were working with that boy, Tommy was, he was adventurous. He always got you into some bullshit, but he always got you <laughs> the fuck out. Like as soon as them parents left, that nigga took that screwdriver and said, Chucky, we out. <laughs> like that nigga, that nigga, his brain, he, he a horse, he a cowboy or some shit. That nigga downstairs in the basement on his broom. That's just like basically my imagination on how, you know, when I storytell and I, Put shit together, and you know my creativity. I'm really one of them, like one of them guys. I work hard as shit, like consistency, and with that creativity, I got that shit down packed and uh, nipped in the bud. So everybody want to talk to bring the '90s back. All right, let's really bring that shit back. Let's bring an actual character, saucy him up, 2018, which is me, Tommy Pickle. So you know, right now it's Tommy season. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about the project a little further. Okay. Let's break down the production, the features. Cause I feel like this is. This is probably my favorite project from you. I mm -hmm. feel like the growth is there from the last project to this one. But tell the people about the production you got on there, features you linked up to have on there. Break Thank it down. You. Um, all right, the production I got um Benny Warren and Molly Raw. Okay, shout out to them. Shout out to them, and that uh that Hank though Ed looked up from uh Benny because I uh, I got a lot of work with Benny Warren. Shout out to him. Okay. And he had seen me that he was like, yo, like, Molly, we got this collaboration. I mean, niggas, for somebody put the touch of they ain't never I'm saying with that. Everybody send that joint to you. I send that shit back to him the next day. Mm. Um, who else? Dougie, Dougie on the beat. He on that joint too. Yep. Uh, the Kiss and Styles joint. Actually, he sent me that joint like almost three years ago. Mm. Like three years ago, he sent me that beat. Like I just never knew what to do with it. I got a bunch of instrumentals, like from a lot of people. And who else is on there that I got? Don Cheese. Okay. He did free game. He did free game. Uh, Jay Sparks, Andrew Murray, um, Manny on the beat. Um, I think the rest of the drums is uh, freestyles. Okay. Now, what about features? Lights on there. Shout out the lights. Shout out the lights. I got um, shout out F.A. Snoop, Young and She up and coming. Okay. Um, I got. Chase Lee, the, uh, the mad rapper D Dot on that joint. Oh yeah, shout out to D Dot. <laughs> yeah, shout out to D Dot. How'd you link up with D Dot? Uh, I linked up. It's crazy how I linked up with him. I linked up with him um, through my homie Wiz again. Okay, shout out to Wiz. Wiz and, uh, and my homie Rez, Rez Deluxe, producer. Uh, them, them two. And he been trying to. They been trying to link me up with D Dot, but you know D Dot. That's a 
that's a hard motherfucker to get with. Like yeah, man. He, he don't he don't he don't fuck with a lot of people. Legendary producer. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying so. Not only did I work with him, that's kind of like my mentor. Okay. That's like my OG. Like so when you know, I listened to him a lot. Like that nigga taught me a lot of shit. Like from rap from rapping in two years, I learned a lot more from that motherfucker in three months. Mm. That nigga's a workaholic. Sometimes he. Be, that nigga be out working me sometimes. I'm like, damn, cuz you damn man, like, I'm, I'm damn, like, damn, I, now I gotta turn it up then. Like, he's <laughs> a real rat. He don't, he don't pull no punches. He keep that shit real. If he don't like it, he gonna tell you from the rip. Nah, I, I, I ain't feeling that shit. He's honest 100%. He's 100%. And then knowing that the, the shit he done did and the shit that he done, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, the shit that he done did, shit that he, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's kind of an honor, like a pleasure for me to uh, be with that nigga. Like, so I don't be half of me be like, yo, like, shit is lit. Like, hat, like, god damn. Like, I used to listen to this nigga in the CDs, CD play, shit like that. I know who he is. And the other half of me is like, you ran, show, you know what the fuck you doing. Let's get to work. <laughs> so it's like, I'm saying, I just, it'd be a pleasure with him that. You know, and that's how, and fucking with him, that's how I got Tracy Lee on the track too. You know, I've been who he was. Not a lot of my age, you know, but you know, hip hop heads, veterans he did, he definitely made his mark. Especially, especially in Philly. Yeah. Especially in Philly, yo. Like, yeah. Like, so to have him on some shit with me too, that shit was just like, ah. That shit was love. It's a lot, it's a, it's a lot more work to be done too, but just, it's like blessings. So, what was your experience like putting this project together? Honestly, it was like, hurry up. Because honestly, Tommy season, I wanted to make a, uh, I wanted to put 20 songs on there. Okay. But you know, it's so different now. Everybody attention span is not there anymore. Right. That's why nowadays you see a, a track list, they got seven, eight, nine, ten 10 songs. Yeah. You know, back then, they, it, motherfucking the 15, 16, 17 songs, that's what we was looking for. So. I got it. You got to adjust to the times for for us. So I said, you know what? It's the summertime. I got a lot of music in the tuck. I'm going to have to put some shit out while it's hot. So let me just get niggas 10 of these bangers right here and Tommy season two coming. Okay. Okay. You got a date for it? or Probably August. Okay. Right after the concert. We're going right back to work. Okay. You're not playing, man. Nah. Um, what was the lead single off the Tommy season project? And what's the next visuals you plan on dropping off that project? Um... Well, Free Game happened to be the first single. We'll be, I mean, I'm, I'm not not Free Game. Uh, 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 One Way Forever happened to be the uh, first single because I put that out in like January. Visual and all that. And I just threw that joint on there. Lost Up and Free Game. I'm about to damn near do a video for all of them joints. Me like, too. why not? That's right. like a. I feel like that's a hit tape. Like. All audiences, all songs, like it ain't like it's just really no skips. It kind of give me like a a Carter three or like a Get Rich or Die Trying feel, like how when you ain't had to turn them joints, like mm. every song was hot, like no matter what he was talking about. Okay, okay. Now you mentioned August eighth, uh, you have a concert at Vultures Lounge. Yeah. Um, tell us about the concert and what people should expect when they come out to the concert. Uh, it's like a, a, a good show because if you ever saw me perform, you know I'm a hell of a, I'm a hell of a performer. Like, I don't really just sit, stand around with the mic on my hand and do all that extra bullshit. Like, I really <laughs> take time into my, uh, like, performances because I want you to feel what I'm trying to bring to you. Okay. Like, I'm, one of the, I'm a one-man band man. When I go perform, I don't need a million niggas back, back behind me, you know, dancing, doing all that extra shit. My show will be popping with or without me. Sometimes I might be like, yo, family, family, I need some space. Like, I might not even need to. I like to run around. I'm energetic like shit. <laughs> but, um... Dope openers, Tiz215 will be in the building. Okay, shout out to Tiz. Rico Havoc will be in the building. Definitely shout out to Rico. My young boy Janet too, he'll be in the building. I got a couple more, uh, I got a lot of, a couple more guests too. I don't want to spoil the rest of the surprises, but it's, it's a couple more names on there too. Okay. It's going to be a good show. If people want to cop tickets, where can they get tickets for you? Uh, on me, I'm all through the city. I'm around like a donut. You <laughs> understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I don't, I'm, I'm, you need a ticket or whatever, I'm there, $10. Cheap. And, it's, and if you don't happen to get tickets, it's 15 at the door. Right. Okay. Now, if somebody's watching this and they like what you're talking about, they never heard your music before, what's the first track they should go Google or jump on YouTube and check out for? Wow. That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a good question. Because 
due to the fact that I got so many. You got a lot of content. Out, so. Yeah, I got a lot of content, and not only that, I'm versatile. Like so, it's, it's, it's all different uh, sounds I got. You really could tune into anything that you want to and be like, wow. Like you could turn, like you could go to YouTube, you catch something like pussy is power. You're like yo, he can talk that shit. Then you might, then something on the bottom of it might be AF1. We turn the fuck up. Or then you might get something like incarcerated. Well, that's street shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, you mean, type my name and then see, and, 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 and go uh, digging that treasure, man, and see what you okay. find that gold. Okay. Now, Kicks USA. <laughs> um, I see them supporting your movement heavy. Uh, talk to us about your relationship with Kicks USA and how you guys linked up. Uh, well, me and the Kicks USA. I ain't really been hearing them as some Kicks USA in a minute. Okay. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you, Kicks. Kicks, I back like 2016-17, I was like doing North Face like photo shoots and stuff like I've that. I've seen you all over the place. You see what I'm saying? Like, okay. like the powerhouse joint, cool. And I didn't hear from him anymore. I don't know if it was because I used to work for him too. Okay. I used to be like, like I don't work no more. I don't even. I ain't. I ain't got a job, bro. My job is this. You and me, and my music. I ain't. I ain't doing no more applications. I can like bullshit. You ain't taking my time. I got two feet into this shit. I had enough of that shit. I'm my own boss. Okay. But no. Um. I was working for them. You know, clock in, clock out. Salesman. Everybody knew. Like everybody knew. Came to see me when they go in the job. Salesman, whatever. Or they was like, oh, grand show shit like that. <laughs> like, like, all right, cool. But soon as I stopped working for the motherfuckers, like soon as I said I ain't working for the motherfuckers no more, it just, just stopped. Mm -hmm. I just was like, oh, okay, cool. Shit. And with the way the shit going on right now, you might want to fuck with Rain Shaw or like, don't be stupid. <laughs> now, talking about companies and businesses, there's a lot of people watching this that got that bag that could potentially change your life. Are you looking to stay independent or are you looking to sign with a major? Um. I'm looking. I'm, I, ain't, I ain't going to sit here like everybody else. Stay independent from muscle, blah, 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 and I'm going nowhere. I mean, yeah, I'm uh, going to stay independent. But like, if you wanna, if you wanna fuck with us, like fuck with me, you would have to, you would have to sign G and me, and I'm the artist that G and me pushes. And on top of that, we want to have owners of our masters too. I'm on some shit. I'm on, I'm not one of them guys. I'm one of them guys. We, 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 we if you want to approach me, we gotta have an awesome deal. So you want a partnership? I want a partnership. I don't want to. I don't want to sign. I want a partnership. I mean, like we can do partnership because I got a lot of shit to bring to the table. Okay. Music wise, I don't just rap like that. I can song write for motherfuckers too. Yeah, I can write some shit for you too. No matter who you is, like I can write some shit too. I'm looking to go into filming, directing. I want to go into sports. This is what GME is. Gorilla Mindset Entertainment. You see my my boys, they all got a GME drawing. Gorilla Mindset ENT, and that stands for use your brain instead of your heart. Your brain is the, the smartest and strongest thing God could have given to you. Unfortunately, not a lot of humans use it. So uh, they, they just use a Gorilla Mindset, you know. Your heart could be snatched and taken away from broken from you. Your mind can't. You could be in a lot, you could save yourself from a lot of crazy predicaments and be in a lot of better positions if you just use your brain first instead of going off emotionally, like, you know, at reacting up that type of time. Very wise words, man. Now, before we uh, turned the cameras on, we were having a little bit of conversation. Some of you guys were talking, and I gotta <laughs> ask you about the do rag. What's up with the do rag, bro? What's up with the do rag? It's like, this is what's up with the do rag, right? Like, I do what the fuck I wanna do, bro. Like, check this out. You see this, right? <laughs> so you got a ball Why right? the fuck did I just have a do rag in 2018 <laughs> right now, correct? Right. Check this out. We in this rap shit, right? Sure. If you got like red, pink, blue, yellow hair and got your nose pink, red, black, all this extra shit, your hair, you wasn't born like that, my nigga. You <laughs> got a skirt on with damn near flops in the bag. And you, what else these other motherfuckers be doing? Weird shit. I'm gonna wear a motherfucking do rag. <laughs> I do what the fuck I want to do when I do and how I want to do it. That's what make me different anyway in the first place. You know how many times I done did shit like in the past and niggas be like, no, I don't do that shit, don't do this shit. Sometimes they was right because I ain't always right all the time. So I go to my niggas sometimes like, yo, like I'm saying, like I don't have any yes men around me. 
So sometime, but when I know for sure I'm gonna do some shit, he's like, no, 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 I don't give a fuck. I'm still gonna do what the fuck I wanna do. Uh, and, 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 and the number thing was that is, I'm a hip hop boy, like I said, so a nigga that's like 35, 30 something, right? they see me to do right now, I was regular. Back, <laughs> back then, that, that was really like a, a trend, like a stat, like to have a do rag going, that was the shit back in the day. There was a million motherfuckers that wear do rags, but now since the genre and like the the, 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 the the generation and everybody, well, you know, they, they listen to social media now, like nobody got a brain of their own. If they go on Twitter and that shit got 17,000 retweets, they gonna live by that tweet right there. No matter if it was fucked up or if it was right or wrong, like, they still gonna go for that because, you know, they ain't, nobody got a brain of their own. I do what the fuck I want, man. Always had. Oh, for the people that want to follow you on social media, what's your Instagram, Twitter, the Ranshaw GME. Ranshaw GME. R A N S H A W G M E. And um, that's for my Twitter, my Instagram. I don't got a Snapchat, no shit like that. And um, you can find me on. SoundCloud, YouTube, Google, Spotify, iTunes, Apple, Amazon, all that shit. Ranshaw, R A N S H A W. Okay. Now, is there anything else you want to leave the people with before we get out of here? Um. Yeah, man. Get ready for the uh. Get ready for the concert. Get ready for the show. Get ready for all that, man. Get ready for me, man. I'm about to really do my thing this year, man. It's most underrated. Highly anticipated, never duplicated. Tommy Pickles with the body, broke boys can't call me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, it's your boy Rick Dange. Mm-hmm. He with Ranshaw signing out for hip hop since 1987.com. Shout my hip hop since 1987, niggas. Hip hop since 1987.com. I'm from Long Island, Long Island, New York. Um. I got my name off of the mixtapes, like, um, back before the digital ever, before the gram, you know what I'm saying? Like, I used to, um, put out a lot of mixtapes and do units, you know? Me and my partners, Tape Masters Inc., started a, uh, a mixtape website called The Mix Game. When they pop drama, they pop, you know, they ran down in the offices, my offices, you know, we was moving DVDs and CDs like crack, you know what I'm saying? Every, every take we would drop, we would do like 20,000, 30,000 units. We was actually, even at that time, like the labels, they were getting mad because they weren't making no money off the mixtapes. Right. And, and we was getting all of that mixtape money. Right. So, you know, off of that, you know, I just kept on grinding. 